Today you'll see two jackets, they're quite sporty, casual and the cool thing about this one is that you can make it with either a structured knit or a woven. I've got a sort of mix of both, I've had a lot of fun. There's one for my mum, one for me. Excited to share. Hi sewing friends, my name is Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing. And I'm excited to share two jackets I've made in the last couple of days. Before I start, I might as well tell you where I am. I'm in my in-law's backyard next to an avocado tree. So you might see these on the shot, but look at this. Look at these little avocados. They're babies. They still have to grow and they'll be ready in a few months. I'll never get to try them because I'm not here when they ripen. But it's huge. So many avocados. We love them here in Chile. Anyway, that's where I am. Avocado tree over here. The new pattern I'm talking about from Love Notions is called Clef. It's really cool, it's nice and sporty, it's very casual. But you know there are ways to make things look not so casual, which is sort of my vibe. And it's designed for woven fabric or knit fabric. I'll go into more depth about the fabric in a second. But there are quite a few options here. For the neckline finish, you can choose between a collar or a hood. For the center front finish, you can choose between a button placket or a zipper installation, separating zipper. At the hem, you have a hem allowance. Inside that casing, you can either put elastic if you want to, or you can do buttonholes and grommets and do a drawstring that's up to you Re the sleeves are regular there's nothing interesting going on with the sleeves they're just long sleeves and here at the hem you also have the same feature hem allowance is one inch where you can fit an elastic through I do think it's an optional feature though so I left my sleeves plain with no elastic there I think that is personal preference at least in my case I have really sensitive skin right there I try to leave no details here because when I've had elasticized wrists, I tend to feel it a lot. So especially when the fabric is heavier, like for jackets, I think in blouses like lightweight rayon, you know, the elasticized features here can be quite light and you don't feel it as much. On the front, we have two types of pockets. I do think they're optional. I think the work pocket doesn't need to be there if you don't want it to be there, but I think it's cute. I think you should do it. It's just a small one on the chest. I mean, if you wanted to, you could do it on both sides. That's up to you. And then below you have kangaroo pockets. They're patch pockets that are just sewn onto the front. Super easy to sew. I think in the grand scheme of things, those could be optional as well. If you didn't want those, you could just opt out, but I would put them in. <laughs> So I always think those details are optional in patterns. I made two versions and for both I chose the same features. I have the collars right here and the button plackets. I've done so many zippers lately I didn't feel like doing any zippers. I'm sure later on when I repeat the pattern I'll do the other features and you'll see them later on. Because the clef is a brand new pattern it will be on its release week until next Thursday. Until next Thursday the 18th of January. Even though the site-wide sale 30% off is still happening this is a new pattern release, so it's not 30% off, <laughs> it's 24% off. Remember, always use my code when you check out because you get an extra 10% off. At this point in time, it's 10 Karina, but you always need to check in the description box or the pinned comment because I update that code every time it changes every three months. So don't forget to do that so you can pay a little bit less. Don't forget to use my affiliate link when you make your purchases. I do make a small commission from there and you don't pay anything extra. And it is one of the ways I make an income making sewing content on YouTube. It's free for you to watch. <laughs> I said that you could use either woven fabric or neat fabric. I think they should be medium to heavy weight. For woven fabrics, there's so many options. You know, the more structured, the easier it is to work with. You could use a type of wool suiting, 100% wool or just a wool blend. You can use denim, canvas, cotton twill, maybe even some corduroy, some flannel. There's so many options for woven fabrics. One of my versions, the one for my mother, it's entirely in linen, navy, super easy to work with. It's the typical fabric I use the most, which is a blend of 55% linen, 45% rayon, which makes it structured but also soft, not so crinkly as 100% rayon. And the most important thing, the fabric is a little less expensive than 100% linen. So my mom needed a navy jacket, so it's perfect. Now for my version, I decided to do one in a knit. For knit fabrics, I suggest you use medium to heavy weight, more structured knit fabrics like Ponte Roma, Liverpool, French Terry, maybe a sweatshirting material, an athletic knit, I wouldn't suggest fabrics that are super, super, super stretchy like rayon spandex, bamboo spandex, ITY. That's just too lightweight and way too stretchy. I think a lot of the features would deform. Now, I put extra notions that you need here, such as fusible interfacing. They are, the fusible interfacing is mentioned as an option in the pattern instructions. I think it's got more to do with the type of fabric you're using. 
in my personal sewing the way I like to sew I think the collar and the placket should have interfacing no matter what fabric you're using because it's just going to keep the jacket looking nice and structured and hanging right without anything flopping over so I've interfaced my collar and my plackets. You need 3 8 wide inch elastic. I think it could even be 5 8 It would still fit into the casing that's an inch wide for the bottom hem and the wrist if you want to put elastic there. If you don't want to put elastic at the bottom hem, you can just use a drawstring instead. If you wanted, you can use grommets. I wish I'd brought my little grommets kit with me on this trip, but I wasn't prepared, so I didn't use grommets. I used button holes at the bottom which work just as well. The thing that I did with my knit version is that I mixed ponty and linen so the main pieces the front the back the sleeve all of that is the ponty roma but I used black linen for my collar my placket and my well details the kangaroo pockets on the front that is in a contrasting linen fabric which I think looks really cool <laughs> also made it a little easier to work with I always think when you're doing collars and plackets it can be a little more work to get them to look really really nice in a neat fabric if I was doing a placket and collar in neat fabric I would also interface those because then they can stretch out vertically and then you get a wavy look you know there are things that I think are important and I think interfacing is one of those if you're doing buttons with the button placket I think you could use six buttons five it's up to you how many buttons you need for my mom's jacket I had a hard time finding buttons <laughs> I was not that prepared and I just put five there because that is the amount that I found you know in my mom's button collection for mine I did find some buttons that were adequate and I put six on mine I think five to six is okay because it's not a really long jacket if you want to do the zipper instead of the button placket then it's a whole different technique you just need a separating zipper it says the length of it and it has to be that exact length for it to fit the collar there or the hood and the bottom hem so I think if you wanted to make length adjustments you're sort of more limited in the way of the length of the zipper here so think about that for sizing it comes from extra small to 5x there's a standard bust and a full bust option it's a straight boxy fit super easy fit here no darts nothing like that it's a casual design and you find quite a nice amount of ease depends if you do the standard bust or the full bust you have anywhere from 8 to 10 inches of ease and then going down because it's straight there will be a lot of ease <laughs> at the waist then below at the hips four and a half or six and a half inches of ease remember when you use the full bust option you get two extra inches of ease in every single place of the jacket for love notions it's a four inch difference between the high bust and the full bust where you cut off whether you use the regular bust or the full bust option because I only have a three inch difference and I'm a C sewing cup size I always just use the regular bust and I did the same for myself and my mom we have the same cup size so we never use the full bust option now for fitting we left the jacket in the original length I made a, a size medium for my mom I made a size extra large for myself with no fitting adjustments super easy to fit I did sew a non-wearable test garment in this hideous purple fabric I'll show you here a little bit it was very quick to sew I just wanted to see the shoulder fit I wanted to check a few things make sure that I was happy with the original length I tend to like shorter jackets than longer jackets so I sort of knew I didn't want to make it any longer than what it was so I didn't other people would but that's all personal styling personal preference if you're subscribed to the channel and you get all your notifications and such you would have already seen how to sew the small welt pocket on the chest because I made that as a standalone video that could be a universal technique that you could apply to other patterns and and put on other places not just this jacket so it's on its own you would have seen sneak peek of the fabrics I used in this episode you're gonna see general sewing construction specifically the placket and the collar You'll see how to put it together in general so let's hop into there key other pattern pieces for this version of the clef jacket there are other versions as well the main differences are with the type of collar and the type of finish in the center in this case we have the front over here and we're going to have a placket in the center we're also going to have a collar so after the collar is sewn the placket is sewn onto the collar section as well that's why this piece looks a little bit longer right there all of the versions will have a kangaroo pocket that is the kangaroo pocket there I did an extra step of interfacing this slanted area to stabilize it this will get folded in that's optional I just decided to do that 
These two pieces have got to do with the welt pocket that we're going to have on one side. The back is cut on the fold and it's a simple one. Over here you see a mark and that is for a grommet or a buttonhole because at the bottom hem there's the option of threading an elastic through or a drawstring. I'm going to be doing the drawstring option. If you don't want to do a collar you can do a hood as an option as well. For the hood you can also do the placket or you can do zippers instead. I've decided I want this to look a little more dressy so I'm going with the placket options this time for both of my versions. Here are the pattern pieces for my second version and this one's going to be a mix of woven and knit. I think if you're doing a knit it would work much better if you have a stable more structured knit. In this case this is a Ponte Roma. So I'm just doing the main pieces with the Ponte Roma, the front, the back and the sleeve. But all the other details are going to be black linen. I'm going to have a black linen placket, the pockets going to be linen as well, pocket pieces over here for the welt pocket and the collar right there. Now for my versions because they're woven and I want them to be really nice and structured I have interfaced the placket and the collar. If you're working with a really lightweight knit I think it would be easier for you to interface and so the knit doesn't end up looking too floppy. So I think interfacing is always going to be your choice. In my view I think plackets and collars always look nicer interfaced. So I would always do it whether it's a woven or a knit. I'm just using something very, very lightweight so it doesn't end up too heavy. Same as stabilizing the pocket entrance there. I would always want to stabilize that whether it's a woven or a knit. When I get to sewing this, I haven't done it yet, but on the back shoulder right there, I'm also going to fuse a little bit of interfacing to just suppress the stretch of the shoulder right there. It's a ponty, it does have stretch and I don't want that to deform with time with the weight of the sleeve on there. This is the front neckline and you're either going to have a collar or a hood right here. And before doing anything, I want to stay stitch. I'm doing it from the shoulder into the center for both sides within the seam allowance. That will be 3 8 So smaller than that, short stitch length, regular stitch here to conserve the shape. I'm also going to stay stitch the back neckline from the shoulder into the center and then flipping to the other side and doing it in the same way. I've got the center front pieces here. I have pressed up the hem allowance, the memory crease, and it's enough space to put a 3 8 wide inch elastic or just a drawstring. And before I attach on the kangaroo pockets and all of that, I want to do one little step that is going to be easy to do now and then I can forget about later. <laughs> Once you fold up this hem allowance, you can either install a grommet or a buttonhole in that area. I'm going to install a buttonhole. I have grommets at home, thousands. I didn't bring any with me, so I don't have the tools for a grommet. I'm going to do a buttonhole. So just above that crease right here, I'm going to fuse a little bit of interfacing because that's actually where the buttonhole is going to be made, right here in this area. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Before I sew on the kangaroo pockets, I think this is the moment you have good access to this area. These are the kangaroo pockets. It's got a funny shape but once we fold it in it'll make total sense. Now I decided to interface all of this area just to make the area more stable, prevent it from stretching out. Now when we fold this in by an inch you can see that those jagged areas are going to match the lines right here. So I'm going to go over to the iron and press that. We're going to top stitch that down and then after that's sewn I'm going to serge these edges here this long one over here doesn't need to be surged because it will meet the center front of the jacket and will be sewn with the placket later. But this little short end needs to be surged, this one here and that one there. And those are going to be folded in by 3 8 there before we top stitch this onto the front piece. And this is how it looks when it's folded to the other side. It's a slant pocket opening. Because I interfaced it, this is super stable. I'm not concerned this is going to stretch out over time, which I would be with linen. I recommend doing that. It is an extra step, but it's worth it to me. I'm going to use a three quarter inch seam allowance, which is almost as much as it's folded in by an inch. So it'll be caught really well. Okay, I'm going to tell you what's going on with my pocket here. This is a jacket for my mom in a size M. But I have, I've cut out the pocket piece with a size extra large. That's the size I'm using for my jacket. And I've done the same pocket a little bit bigger for my mom's jacket as well because I know she wants a larger pocket. The fold of the pocket here is conflicting with my hem allowance here just because I have a larger pocket. If I'd use size M pocket, then that line here would match up and this would be a little shorter. So what I'm going to do just to keep the large pocket, I'm just going to hike this up a little bit higher so that the bottom of the pocket is clear from that hem allowance at the bottom so that I'm not catching it. So my pocket ends up going about 3 eighths of an inch higher than the line right there. When I sew my jacket, which is a size extra large in the body and the pocket, that line is going to match up and everything's going to be fine. I'm going to hand baste that. 
and get it top stitched. Super easy, patch pockets always super easy to do. Here I have one of the patch pockets pinned on and now that I'm looking at it, I'm gonna do a little trick. Now later on I'm gonna do a buttonhole there and then later, later on, I'm gonna be sewing down the casing for the drawstring there. So I am gonna have a row of stitching there for the hem. I don't wanna have all that stitching here for the bottom of the pocket as well if I can avoid it. So I'm not gonna do a row of top stitching at the bottom. What I'm gonna do is just remove all the pins. I'm gonna take a pin from the back and poke it through right in here like it was a seam right there and the same here on this other side and then I'm gonna flip the pocket okay so I have a pin holding the pocket where it has to be but from the back and now I can just do this right here keep it exactly in the same place it was and I have that memory crease from when I folded this in and this is where I'm gonna sew now so the pocket will be closed you know you can put your hand in but it's just gonna be done sort of from the inside it will be invisible and from the outside side I won't have top stitching on the bottom of the pocket and that will keep the look a little cleaner that's what I'm gonna do make sure it's in the same place as it always was I'm gonna sew right there and then flip it this way and then I'm gonna top stitch the other places of the pocket when I do changes like this it's not that I plan to do them it's just something that comes up in the second that I think hmm let's do it this way this fold here I'm gonna keep it folded Here's one of the pockets done. I'm so happy with this clean edge at the bottom, so I'm not gonna top stitch there. I'm gonna have enough with the hem allowance here where I'm gonna have a stitch a little below that later, and I think that's enough visually for me. <laughs> so all I need to do is top stitch this little bit there and this little bit, not this, because this is a slant, the pocket opening. This over here I'm gonna base together just to make this be one piece, the center front over here. I'm just going to be edge stitching here, just one row on the edge. I'm not going to be doing a double row here. I'm just going to get these little buttonholes out of the way. I made the same mark on both center fronts so it's symmetrical. This is the hem allowance, remember? That's going to be the casing so we need to do it right here. And that's where I had interfaced before. So I have it a good inch away from the center front here and I'm just gonna center it. Now I'm doing these types of buttonholes that basic machines do where you have to do three separate steps. With these ones you have to look at what line you're sewing to and do them all the same so that the buttons are all this the buttonholes turn out the same size. Here is the back piece. The back is simple, there's no seam. I've already finished the front pieces so I'm just going to align them there. I'm going to sew the shoulder seams off camera. I have searched the edges already. I'm going to press those seams open and then we'll be back to sew the collar and the placket. Super easy. The collar piece is a long rectangle. I have chosen to interface mine and you'll see marks here. This is the center back and these will match the shoulder seams. You will see the same marks here on the other side, but I didn't mark them there. I just marked them on one side. What I'm going to do is sew it extended like this, right sides together. And then this other side, I'm going to press it in by 3 8 like this. I'm just going to do it in two stages so that I can enclose the seam. And everything matches up. Those little marks are supposed to match. The shoulders match. Nothing has stretched out of shape over here. So remember here, we're trying to conform a total rectangle to the curve of this neckline. So we just have to be careful. <laughs> I'm at the iron. I've sewn one long end of the collar. I've pressed the other long end up by 3 8 I've Press the seam allowance up towards the collar. That's my intention. I want to hide that seam. And over here, I'm going to do a few snips because this is quite a curved area of the neckline. So I'm just going to snip into here. Seam allowance was 3 8. I think that's okay. I don't need to trim any smaller. The way these plackets are finished is so, so easy. <laughs> They're just long pieces. I chose to interface mine. All we need to do now is fold them together wrong sides. All we need to do is fold them wrong sides together and sew both of the little short ends here by 3 eighths of an inch and then flip it to the other side. And then we're gonna have the plackets finished on the top and the bottom. So that's all we need to do. If you've made changes to the front and the back and added an inch or took away half an inch or whatever, you need to do the same to this. 
because this is calculated at the bottom to reach the very edge of where the fold of the hem is so not including the hem allowance from the front piece so whatever changes you've made make sure you replicate that onto the placket piece or else it might not match I'm going to show you the end of the collar and placket on this Ponty version. For this one I'm mixing with linen. So whenever I've sewn linen onto the Ponty I've made sure to have the linen on top touching the presser foot because that's the most stable fabric and always having the Ponty underneath. I've got my plackets done the same way I did the ones with the navy jacket. It's already here and I've also got my collar sewn. Remember we just sew one raw edge here we leave the rest dangling and the other raw edge is folded in by 3 8. I chose to interface my collars just because I want them to be sturdy. In this case, when I was sewing the collar onto the Ponty jacket, the same. I had the collar on the top and the jacket on the bottom. Now what I've done here is just fold this onto itself halfway. That's important because we need to extend this. Now if you're sewing the zipper, it's going to be the same. You do the exact same thing, it's just that you're going to sew the zipper up to here. So you're going to have the pull end up around this area. In this case, I'm going to sew the placket instead. And we're going to take this placket, we have the fold already done and flipped and everything, and this is going to align right there on this crease that I have from the collar, right there. So let's hold that in place. Now this rest of the collar, we're going to fold onto itself here, right sides together. You're going to be seeing the wrong side of the fabric, or in my case, the interface side. This place, these seams are going to match. And all these raw edges are going to meet. And with this technique, the top part of the placket is going to be enclosed within the collar in the same way that a zipper would, but this is a placket instead. I'm not doing a zipper in this case. And then this bottom of the placket is going to reach almost the bottom here with a one inch excess. One inch is the hem allowance, so this is going to reach up to there. We're going to have an inch dangling. And this hem allowance, we're going to fold it over like this. So I'm going to finish pinning all of this and then we're going to sew it all in one go. The collar is folded over and in the same way the hem is folded over. And now we're going to sew all of this together at 3 8 Okay, that is sewn and surged and now all we need to do is flip this and then this placket is going to come out from within the collar right here. So that area of the seam is enclosed and then the rest is just surged and then at the bottom it's the same. I've already got the buttonhole made right there and that's how this is going to look. Now I'm going to repeat on the other side and then once I've got both sewn, then I'm going to go ahead and align this fold to cover that seam. I'm going to hand baste that and then just so all the way across to fix that down. I'm top stitching the seam allowance of this placket down just on the edge. This top stitching here is going to look pretty and keep it nice and flat on the inside without it moving anywhere, more comfortable as well. So that looks nice. This is how it looks like at the bottom. Hem allowance is still free. I still need to sew that. That will form the casing. At the very end, I'll open this buttonhole and put the drawstring. All the major steps are done. All that's left now for me at least is sew the side seams and the sleeve and then put the drawstring through here. Now, if you want to do the zippered version, all you would have to do is replace sewing the zipper to the center front instead of the placket. What I always do in zippers, especially if I'm sewing in a knit, I would always do it in a knit, I would do it in a wo woven as well, is interface the center front before doing anything. And that would just make that area sturdier to hold the weight of that zipper. And if it was a neat version, it would suppress the stretch in that area and would prevent you from getting a wavy zipper. So those are just general things about zippers. I will leave links below videos where I show how zippers onto jackets. I've got so many. I mean, I've sewn so many jackets with zippers. I'm pretty sure you've seen me do it before. I didn't do it this time. And the way that the top of the placket is enclosed in the collar, as you saw there, would be exactly the same way you would do the zipper. 
So the technique is the same whether you do the zipper or the placket for the collar, that it's extended and then it's folded over onto itself as you saw in the tutorial. This is my mum's navy blue version. You can see the top there, it's really nice and enclosed. And then from behind there comes the placket already sewn. I think it's important to match your serger thread. I guess you could bind that. I think that would be a little bulky for my taste, but you could definitely bind that and have that, you know, looking nice. I would never do contrast binding because then it ruins the other garments you could wear underneath because sometimes it doesn't match. But that's just me. <laughs> Here is the welt pocket on the chest right there. This is how the top looks. The collar starts from there. The placket goes all the way up to the top. That's why you sewed that little seam on top of the placket first before enclosing it. And I have the golden buttons right here. Button holes on this other side. Below there comes the pocket. You can see I have a clean edge at the bottom of the pocket because I did that different technique where I flipped it so it's not top stitched. I didn't want that top stitching there so close to the hem because there is a row of top stitching for the hem that makes the casing. I made the, my own drawstring with this linen and I found these little things so that looks really cute. I did the drawstring instead of the elastic because I think the elastic looks a little more casual than this and I wanted mine to look a little less casual. At the back it's just one back, it's come forward, there's no special details there and the sleeve is just set in on the round and I have a regular hem down here with no elastic in the wrist. So that's mum's version. She styled it in a super casual way that I totally agree with. I love how she looks. Now, I usually style my own makes in several ways. I really couldn't ask that of my mum because even for her to do one look out there was a big ask, <laughs> a big effort on her part. So just one way. She's very casual in the way she dresses every day. She doesn't tend to want to dress things up like I do. That's sort of a me thing. She's a lot more casual. She she prioritizes comfort over everything and she's always wearing loafers and jeans and she looks amazing i think she looks amazing so let's see her walking around in her backyard see how it fits this is my mom's cleft jacket this is a linen rayon blend more linen than rayon so it looks quite a bit structured hers is a size m with a standard bust option we didn't make any changes to the original length now the sleeves they're meant to have an elastic inside the hem as a casing but i just hemmed it normally that's why i had to shorten the sleeve a little bit if you do want to add the elastic the sleeves do need to be a little bit longer i have the placket and the collar that you'll see up closer in a sec i opted to do the buttons i think that's a nice option but you can also do a zipper as well there is a case and a drawstring at the hem. Here's the collar all buttoned up, it's nice and high. You can make this jacket out of a woven or a knit, so it's quite versatile. You have quite a bit of space there in your neck, you're never going to feel constricted. And I think the sleeve and the shoulder fit is really good. I know she's really going to enjoy wearing this navy version. This is totally her jam being all sporty with jeans. Here is her little welt pocket on the chest. It's just one simple welt pocket. You can see how to do that on my channel. In the front, the kangaroo pockets have a nice amount of space. Love making this for her. It's always a treat to sew for her. I'm so happy because I don't see her and I can't sew for her blindly from far away from Brazil if I don't know if it's gonna fit. So I have to sew for her when I'm with her, which is once a year. <laughs> now, this is my one. This Ponte Roma, I bought it recently when I went to Santiago. I went to the fabric district. I showed you that fabric haul. So I had the fabric fresh in my mind and I love this fabric. And I mixed it here with linen. This is the collar in linen or interface, really nice and structured. The placket, you saw how this came together. It's all the same as the navy one. And over here I have linen patch pockets. I thought those would look cute, different. <laughs> I could have used the Ponte Roma. I just thought I'm just going to use a lot of linen in this jacket, so I did. And over here I have the buttonhole with a drawstring. I made it as well and I put those little things right there. And I just have really basic, boring black buttons right here. There's nothing going on with the buttons. They do their thing. <laughs> and the little welt pocket there is super cute. I love it in the contrasting linen. Linen is so easy to work with. It's amazing for welt pockets. You don't have to struggle with anything. 
and everything is really neat. Whenever I use Ponty for sewing, I sew in the same way I would a woven, which means seams are pressed open and edges serged separately. I don't like just using the serger when I sew knits. I like using my sewing machine when I use heavier knits like this and it presses really flat, so neat. And I just like the look so much better than just using the plain serger. I know it's controversial. People are so passionate about their serges and a lot of people don't see why you would want to use your sewing machine on a neat fabric. You definitely can. I always do and I don't regret it. <laughs> that's, that's just the way I like it. So I'm not at home. I don't have all my shoes, my bags, my clothes. I don't have many options for styling at this moment. So you'll see it one way, pretty casual with my glissando skirt, also from Love Notions denim skirt I carry with me everywhere. It's a real staple for me. And yeah, super simple, a bit more casual. Here is my cliff jacket. In this case, the print you see there is Ponty Roma and all the black accents are linen. So I had fun mixing a structured knit with a woven. Love how this one looks. Again, I didn't change the original length or anything like that. This is an extra large with a standard bust option. Again, I hem the sleeves normally. I didn't put the elastic in there. So I also shortened my sleeve a little bit. You see the details up close, but I really love how this feels. It's so comfortable. I love this Ponty print and it's so soft. It's gonna be so comfortable the Buddha wear and I love having that button placket and collar and kangaroo pockets in linen I think it looks really cool and totally my style I also have the casing at the bottom of the hem just with a drawstring alternatively you can put an elastic in there and no drawstring so it's up to you there's quite a few decisions you can make according to what your preferences are I really like this mid hip length and it's got the right amount of ease everywhere it's really easy to fit easy to wear here's my black linen collar and placket I've got simple black buttons right there i did decide to interface all my linen pieces so that it would stand up and not flop this is how the collar looks at the back i do like that structured look there it was what i always wanted all along and then when i open up this collar you can see that the top of the collar encloses that placket area right there so on the top it's really nice and clean it's a very very easy technique you can see how to sew on the channel it's way easier than what you think there on my chest I have a small work pocket that you can see there and that is a really fun technique. I have a whole separate video on how you can do that. It can take you just a few minutes once you practice a bit. It's the easiest work pocket technique out there and it's really cute. You can add this to other garments as well. I really enjoyed this one. I love how it can be casual. I'm limited in my styling options at the moment so I've got it paired with a glissando skirt, denim skirt. But I know if I really wanted to, I could also dress this up. Really love it. Easy to sew and really classic, I find. I'm really happy with my choices. I'm glad I got to make two, I had the time for it. Don't forget that the site wade sale finishes today, Friday the 12th. Today was the pattern release of the jacket, but the sale, the general sale finishes today. Don't forget to check out your favorite patterns. I have all the information down below with my affiliate link and my ever-growing playlist of Love Notions Makes. Have fun browsing, don't forget to check out the cliff. It's really cute I know you're gonna like it and there's so many things you can do with it it can look so different depending on the type of fabric you choose and yeah I hope you enjoyed this episode that's all from me and I'll see you again very soon bye